Crippled by the loss of their supply route, the twin cities of Shangyang and Fengcheng were ready to fall. The Mongols' new long-range trebuchets would test the mighty walls of the Song Fortress, and Kublai Khan would not stop the bombardment until he sat on the throne of all China. After years of resisting Kublai Khan's siege, Fan Cheng and Shang Yang still refused to submit to Mongol rule. To take the cities, Kublai Khan would harness the full power of his empire by enlisting an ally from the Ilkhanate of Persia. Ismail, a siege expert, would lead the Mongol army in the construction of the Huihui Hui Pao, an immensely powerful counterweight trebuchet. This new trebuchet, once constructed, could hurl boulders greater in size than any weapon before it. During the years-long siege, Kublai Khan had established lucrative trade routes with Chinese market towns who swore loyalty to him. Although these trade partners were vulnerable to Song attacks, they could deliver valuable resources to fund Ismail's efforts. The Mongol commercial network could supply Ismail in stone so long as he had enough traders on the road. Look at that. 
죽었다. 
With the counterweight trebuchet constructed, the Mongols could mount their assault on the Twin Cities. As Ismail's trebuchet had a far greater range than those of the Song defenders, the Mongols could attack from a safe distance. Drawn to the bombardment from the trebuchet, the Song soldiers left gaps elsewhere in their defense, which the Mongols could exploit. Oh, yeah. 
十号，保持紧凑，侦察兵，整队前进，侦察兵。
With the bridge rebuilt, the doors to Fancheng were wide open. The Mongols swept into Fancheng, striking down any Song warriors in their path. Oh, 
After years of holding out against the Mongols, the first of the twin cities finally fell to Kublai Khan's army. All that now stood between Kublai Khan and the throne of China was the final stronghold of the Song, the city of Shangyang. With Shangyang's gate undefended, the Mongols could now repair the connecting bridge to the Song stronghold. Ah, 
were free to tear down the Imperial Palace. Mongol warriors flooded the streets of Shanyang as the Song defenders rose to make a desperate last stand. Hey, boy. Don't get 
Shangyang, the great bastion of the Song dynasty, had fallen. Kublai Khan had finished what his grandfather, Genghis Khan, had started. And now, he could establish his own great dynasty and sit on the throne of all China. The Mongol army smashed through Shangyang's defenses and captured the city. Kublai Khan then pursued the remnants of the Song dynasty across southern China. 
In 1279, at the Battle of Yemen, the Mongols destroyed the last defenders of the Song. Kublai Khan now ruled over all China, founding the Yuan Dynasty. His royal court in Chengdu welcomed scholars, traders, and religious leaders. The Mongols demonstrated civility and religious tolerance, but also brutality and violence, typifying the contradictions within the Mongol Empire. Since Genghis Khan first united the Mongolian tribes, they had made incredible advances in technology and trade. And they created indelible connections between East and West. At its height, almost a hundred million people lived under Mongol rule, a quarter of the world's population. The Mongol Empire endured for less than 200 years before fragmenting into smaller territories. But its legend continues to this day. Genghis Khan's mission was to unite the world into one empire. Yet he always returned to the Mongolian steppe, where the endless grasslands lay beneath the eternal sky. And from where he created one of the largest empires the world has ever known.